My dudes, it finally happened. After years of selling Daytonas and exalting the triple cylinder as the greatest engine configuration, I got invited out to a Triumph event. So let's raise a glass, let us toast to never giving up and continuously harassing Triumph in my videos until they said, let's just get this guy to a press event so he shuts up. So what was this event? What is going on? Yami, tell us. Okay, okay, don't twist my leg. The only thing we like twisting around here is throttles. A while back, my new guy at Triumph emailed me and said, hey, let's chat on the phone. And on that call, he said, how does a trip to Morocco to try the new Tiger 900 sound? And I said, you know what? That sounds pretty good. So I got on a plane to go out to Morocco for a few days and see what the new Triumph Tiger 900 is all about. As a quick aside, I will be putting out a longer form, more raw impression of the bike as I rode it around Morocco. You guys know I had to capture some good old fashioned moto vlogs while I was on it. So be on the lookout for that later on and subscribe so you don't miss it. Today's video is a comprehensive look and review of this new motorcycle, the Tiger 900. So let's get into it. The Triumph Tiger is a beloved motorcycle amongst Triumph aficionados such as myself, but especially amongst owners of this bike. Ask any former or current Tiger owner how they feel about their bikes, and you better pull up a chair because you're about to get a loving, doting earful of the glory that is the Hinkley-based brand's flagship adventure bike. Owning a Tiger is kind of like being a vegan. How do you know if someone owns a Triumph Tiger? Don't worry, they will tell you. Triumph is well aware of this love of their bike. In fact, they've sold over 80,000 units of their Tiger 800 lineup since its inception. Adventure bikes sell. In the same way that Jeeps sell because of their rugged, off the beaten path look, GS's KTM adventure bikes and Tenere's are very appealing to people who want to look like they might hit up the Dakar Rally next weekend. And honestly, isn't all of motorcycling just selling someone on a dream, even if that dream only lives in the owner's head as they make their way to Starbucks? Let's go over some of the high level changes made to this bike. The Tiger 900 is an all new motorcycle. Now when I say all new, we're talking a new engine and frame. They've also gone away with naming it the XC, XCE, or any other combination of letters. It's much simpler now. You got the base, the GT, the Rally, and Pro versions of the GT and the Rally, which we're going to go over in depth. The 900cc, or rather 888cc mill found in this bike boasts a wider torque curve, Euro 5 compliance, and a unique new firing order known as the T-plane crank. The bump and displacement is a trend we're seeing across the board in order to meet these tighter emissions regulations. This T-plane crank struck me as a marketing gimmick at first, but it really does give the engine a distinctive bark and tone over the typical three-cylinder offerings from Triumph. Other changes include an all new frame that's lighter and designed to be modular with yields in 11 pound weight savings over the outgoing model and a new suite of electronics that are pretty all encompassing, if a bit cumbersome and awkward when you're actually trying to ride the thing. So in typical motorcycle industry fashion, they've designed a bike that's lighter, torquier and boasts fancier electronics than the outgoing model. Awesome. But what does that really mean? One of the most important things you need to understand about this Tiger 900 is that there's two variants with pro versions respectively. There's the GT, which is more street biased, and the Rally, which is more off-road biased. There's also a base model, but we didn't get the chance to ride that one, and honestly, I don't really care. There are enormous differences between these two bikes, so much so that riding them back to back felt like they were completely different motorcycles. The GT is a sport touring motorcycle through and through. I would not feel comfortable taking it on anything more significant than a gravel road. It comes equipped with a 19 inch wheel at the front, Marzocchi suspension as well with full adjustability, and the Pro comes with an electronically controlled rear suspension. That's designed so you can quickly set the preload to accommodate a passenger, luggage, or both. That's a cool and thoughtful feature. The Rally version comes equipped with a 21 inch front wheel and the big boy Showa front forks. The rear is manually adjustable suspension, not electronically controlled like the GT version. The point I want to drive home is that these are basically two different motorcycles. One has a sport touring, almost naked bike feel, while the other is a commanding proper adventure motorcycle. If you're in the market for these bikes, try both of them out and see how they are because I was genuinely shocked at how different they rode. If it were my money, I wouldn't bother with the GT. You should get the Rally or the Rally Pro unless you are limited by size, and even then Triumph makes a low seat height version of the Rally and can sell you a lowered seat for the Rally as well. The Rally feels better going down the road. It's more capable and it 
just looks cooler, let's be honest. Go for the rally. Now, I spent most of my time in Morocco with the Rally Pro. We rode from Marrakesh to the West African coast about 210 miles. This was mostly tight, winding little B roads that were dubiously cared for. On this day, we also went down a better maintained, mostly straight road to see its highway munching capabilities. The Tiger 900 Rally handled its on road duties with poise and refinement, typical Triumph quality and ease of operation that I've experienced from their motorcycles. To be honest, it's a testament to how good bikes are nowadays that we don't really even think about things like fueling, brakes, and etc. in this category. Everything just works, and it works really well. Then again, this is a bike that costs north of $16,000, so it better all work. I really enjoyed flicking the Tiger around those twisties and seeing what it could do. Now remember, it's no sports bike, even with that peppy new three cylinder, it has all the characteristics of a torque first, low revs kind of engine. But there's something really fun about taking a bike with 21 inch wheels and chucking it into a corner. There's some sick sense of pleasure in searching for those pegs when you have it cranked over mid lean. But again, it's a testament to its on road capabilities that I can even be that playful with a motorcycle that weighs near 475 pounds ready to ride. Triumph only claims dry weight, so I'm kind of estimating here a little bit. The Rally Pro I was on that day was wearing some pretty grippy Bridgestone Battle Axe Adventure tires. They were more than up to the job of smashing down those poorly maintained B-roads. I had so much fun that apparently, according to Spurgeon from Revzilla, who was behind me during our on-pavement section, that I caught a small bit of air as I yeeted the throttle towards this little jump. Thank you for validating what I felt from the saddle, Spurge. As I mentioned earlier, we had quite a few boring highway miles on that ride. This might be my own experience showing here, but since I'm used to much, much simpler motorcycles, my daily ride is the Desert Sled, and my main track bike is a 675R, neither of which have any electronics or features for comfort or anything like that. The Tiger 900 is supremely comfortable to be able to gobble up miles with the best of them. Did find the Tiger 900 to be a bit of a spaceship going down the road. The seven inch TFT display has four different screens to display just RPM speed and gear. It has five different modes with an optional rider mode that you can tweak to your liking, including rain, road, sport, off-road, and off-road pro. An important thing to note is the GT does not have these off-road and off-road pro modes. That is exclusive to the Rally, which again tells you how different these two bikes are and what Triumph is trying to get you to do with them. Basically, these modes change the level of traction control that's available to you, power output, and some slight variation in the throttle application. Rain being the softest setting and then off-road pro basically giving you none of the nannies and letting you have at it. On the road, I stuck it into road mode and shortly into sport mode. With a quick shifter up and down, it does take away some of the pizzazz of grabbing gears down yourself, even though you can't do it, just feels a little weird. To be honest, I would have preferred this bike with a quick shift up only feature as I enjoy grabbing gears down myself. I think assisted downshifts work really well in hardcore race and track applications. When you're braking harder and harder and not having to think about rev matching, it does come in handy. But on the Tiger, I felt it was a little bit of overkill. Not only that, I also had some issues with my quick shifter system and some of my riding modes on the bike on the road on my second day. I couldn't get it to quick shift, it was stuck on road mode with no traction control available to me. However, only one other person I spoke to had these problems, so it could just be some weird pre-production problems. On a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of obtrusiveness, the electronics on this motorcycle are a 5. They absolutely inform and dictate your experience with the machine, but it doesn't dominate it. When you turn the key and start it up, the 7 inch screen lights up with the Triumph logo and you start getting all the whiz bang features flying at you. My honest opinion, I don't really like this level of electronics on bikes, I prefer good old fashioned analog fun, but in this segment it's important and it is necessary to keep up with the competition. When you start it up, you need to navigate to the proper settings, select your mode, be mindful of your modes, etc. Again, it's a 5 out of 10 for obtrusiveness, you will definitely notice and be informed by these systems. Also, it does not remember what mode you were in when you turn off the key, which is a bit annoying. The throttle response is sublime. Triumph is well regarded in the industry for having one of the best throttles out there. It's one of the reasons I adore my 675R. It has the crispest cable actuated throttle with the nicest fueling. I love it so much. But this new generation ride by wire system that Triumph has cooked up, it definitely feels artificial, but it's predictable, easy to use, and feels about as good as any electronic throttle that I've used. It's worlds better than Yamaha's, and I've really enjoyed it. And once you wick that throttle, you get the signature whistle and howl of a Triumph triple, but this time with a bit of a dual character. Down low, it grunts and barks like a twin, yet rev it out as I did plenty on my road ride, and it rasps towards its red line with ease. Now, it doesn't love the high RPM stuff, but it'll happily do it. 
My favorite thing to do after we'd set off from our photo shoots was to just goose the throttle from first through fourth gear and just clicking up the gears of the quick shifter. It's a perfectly refined experience. Now on our second day, we did some off-roading. Full disclosure, you guys know I'm a dedicated track junkie and I love going fast, but I do lack experience in the dirt and I am no means an expert. That being said, I've ridden off-road many times with my desert sled, I've done a bit of a trip in Mexico with it, and I feel reasonably confident talking about my experience. But keep that in mind as I share my thoughts on what I thought this bike is like off-road. We took the new Tiger 900 through loose sand, hard packed sand on the beach, which was insanely fun by the way. Muddy dirt, loose dry inclines, some gravel, descents with baby heads, a couple trails with steep ledges, some scraggly bits with semi-loose rock, and even a water crossing to get the full adventure experience. My only reference point for this machine is my own desert sled, and boy how they are different and yet the same. The rally is definitely aided by those electronics, the 21 inch wheel, which was sporting Pirelli Scorpion rallies on them, which is not the tire it comes from the factory but it should be the desert sled had those sock when you buy it and the sublime big show of front forks they soak up bumps with ease and the ground clearance you have it's easy to smash some ledges that make you think i'm about to wreck the skid plate on this press bike much like every other sort of off-road bike with a healthy amount of torque, the rear wheel is very much willing to slide and skid around whenever you add a little bit more than 20% throttle at any time. It's a really fun way to ride the Tigers, add some gas and scoot it around. But there's an elephant in the room. Here's the thing. ADV bikes, as cool as they look, they sell the image of smashing through the Dakar, but unless you possess those World Rally star levels of talent, most of these bikes are never going to see anything more aggressive than a gravel road up a trail near a national park. Trust me. Take it from a guy who took his desert sled on some pretty nasty and grueling dual sport rides in Mexico for five days, a big heavy bike will always be a big heavy bike. ADVs are almost like the new age scramblers with a comfort and touring twist. They can go off road and carve up some rather difficult terrain if you choose, and they can go on road and munch down the miles and do all of it with sophistication, style, technology, and relative ease. So what place does the Tiger 900 serve? Well, as a jack of all trades, it needs to be able to do everything Thing, but not be great at any one thing. So is it great at not being great at anything? The short answer is yes, but the long answer is coming up. The Tiger 900 have flattered my very limited off-roading abilities. It swung around, skidded about, danced along some finer, siltier things on the trail, but not once did it scare me that it was going to tip over. Those electronics, as in-your-face as they are, really do some trickery on the trail. It's a sign that the bike works well when I can't really tell what it was doing, but I know it was helping me stay upright and was giving me more confidence when I was on the trail. It's also a sign that I got off my demo bike at the end of our off-road tour, which included camel, goat, lamb, dog, and cat sightings along the way, and I was pleased. I was confident and happy in my excursions off-road with this big bike, if a little bit tired. Speaking of big, the dimensions of this motorcycle are slimmer than other ADV bikes I've ridden. It's not as intimidating as a BMW GS1250, but it's also not as inviting and fun to whip around like a dual sport. It sits pretty firmly in the middle, but it's a huge improvement over previous middleweight ADVs that I've swung a leg over. With 888ccs of triple fun, the Tiger has the tractor factor that lovers of larger displacement off-road bikes will love. I purposefully would lug it up hills in second gear just to see what it would do, and it would just chug right along, giving me that distinct new T-plane triple sound. Now I'm going to skip competition for this section because I haven't ridden any of the new crops of adventure bikes like the KTM 790 Adventure, Africa Twin, or BMW 850GS, so in the interest of fairness, you'll have to look elsewhere for some big comparisons between them, and honestly, this video is getting kind of long, so let's wrap it up. Okay, so who should buy this bike? One detail from the presentation that I thought was very interesting is the Tiger 900 can now be made A2 compliant. This is a very interesting proposition and opens it up to a huge audience. Now, is the audience for a $16,000 adventure bike found in those who have a A2 license? Probably not. But at the same time, I love the fact that it can be made A2 compliant. It really opens up a whole new world for beginners. It also presents a rather unique value proposition, just like the old Tiger 800. It's the only adventure class motorcycle with a three-cylinder engine giving it a really distinct and unique character. That uniqueness is one of the reasons why I love my Daytona so much. Sure, you could get an adventure bike with a twin or a big single 
single cylinder, but wouldn't it just be that little bit extra cooler to hear a triple when you crack open the throttle? The only thing to keep in mind this is this is a 2020 motorcycle. It is absolutely laden with technology and features. If you like that sort of thing, you're going to really dig the Tiger as it feels super premium and chocked with features and tech, punching above its price point in my opinion. If you prefer your motorcycling a bit more simple like I do, this might not be the right bike for you. I'm thinking about things like the Tenere 700 for example, that might be a better option. The Tiger 900 is like a fully decked out SUV. It's capable, it's got loads of tech, it's comfortable, and it's primarily sold to people in their late 30s and early 50s. It's a sweet ride. The Tiger, however, gave me the sensation of being a very serious bike. It's not as silly or as playful as other motorcycles I've ridden or enjoyed. It feels like a professional showing up to do its job and it will perform with precision and expertise. Sure, you can have fun, it's still a motorcycle after all, but it goes about its business in a very serious manner. So if you're looking to throw down serious mileage on your motorcycle and you want to do it in style and comfort, all while having the possibility of doing some light off-roading, the Tiger 900 is an amazing premium option. This motorcycle would make a fantastic addition to someone stable as their commuter, long distance rider, and more. It's a versatile and capable machine that does well in nearly every environment. So question, is the Tiger 900 great at not being great at anything? I think so. Thanks again to Triumph for inviting me out to this event for the Tiger 900 launch. I'm a huge fan of what the company does and everyone knows that I'm not getting paid to say that because I've been a literal diehard for the Daytona since 2015. The Tiger 900 is a really cool motorcycle and I had a blast exploring Morocco with it and testing it out to the best of my abilities. So that's going to wrap it up for today, my dudes. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my raw impressions vlog on the Tiger 900. That's going to be a pretty long video. You get to see the bike in action and me discussing my thoughts around it. Thanks again for watching. Tune in next time. I'll catch you on the next one.